Okay, live. We are live. So what do you want to start with, and then we'll go from there? Um, let's start with the phone one, the location tracking. That that AT, that AT&T to, told the networks? Well, I'll just pass it to you, and you talk about it. Okay. Okay. What is this? I got a note. Nope. Wrong one. Oh, sharing. Okay. <clears throat> I have 806. Okay, let's do this. What episode is this? Nine? This is nine. Yeah, getting up there. Yeah, we're already at almost two months. <laughs> okay, three. I right, can't do it. Two, one. Hello, everyone. Welcome to another installment of Insecurity. We are at episode nine. Just think about it. Nine weeks ago, we started this. And once again, we always have the famous Tom Webster coming in. Howdy, guys. And today, once again, is another news day. We have more NSA leaks. We have more news for you. We just have more news that, unfortunately, we don't want to share, but everyone needs to know. So, Tom, what's first? Oh, first is uh, your cell phones. And, you know, if the, the crazy guy, the crazy homeless guy on the side of the street didn't tell you a couple years ago, the government's tracking you through your phones, we have confirmation of that. Um, the NSA collects, and uh, the numbers say, according to the Washington Post article, 5 billion records a day. That's 5 billion location pings, GPS pings per day is what they can see. Now, wasn't the, is, is this the same thing they were doing with AT&T, I don't know, back in 2003? Um, well, we're not entirely sure we think so. It's, it's well known that law enforcement, with a proper warrant going through course, going through proper channels, can say, hey, we need to track a cell phone, and they work with the company to watch it hit towers. Now, this, this is a little different. This is mass collection of everyone's locations, of anyone that even gets slightly onto the NSA's radar. Their location is being reported and being stored, and they can play back... You know, your commute to work, the uh, way you go home, the grocery store you visited. Oh, look, he hit a liquor store on the way home. Maybe he's an alcoholic. Maybe when he runs for president, we can use that against him. You know, stuff like that. Um, it's it's really – it's kind of scary stuff when you think about the implications. I mean, you, you can watch a, a famous Will Smith movie and get just, just the tiniest bit of what's possible with this amount of information. It's a little scary to think that – that now it's just as simple as I can go. A police officer can go down and fill out a pen register, but at least they had to actually do something to get the information. Here, it's just sent right to them. All they have to do is they don't even have to fill out anything. It's just there. Yeah, yeah. They're just acquiring it. They're just getting it. Um, and I mean, let's be honest. This type of information um, would be excruciatingly hard, if not impossible, to get without the full cooperation of your cell phone companies, of T-Mobile, Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, all of them. Um, so we, we can be pretty much assured that your cell phone companies, and people have been saying this forever, it's not really news, your cell phone companies are working directly with the NSA to sell you out. Well, I mean, <clears throat> like I said, not, not to make a joke out of this, but I think actually Google now had the ability to share your commute information with your circles. But again, it goes back to that's – we choose to do that. We absolutely right. say that's okay. Here's who we want. It. Here it's just – they just want to see who you're calling. They all – they don't have to. We just said it. They don't have to ask, and then they have the location tracking. Now, now I think we've all known that they've been location tracking for years. I mean, you can. Right. We, we've watched the spy shows where they say, "Let's triangulate his cell phone location and figure this out." But now they're getting, now they're getting the phone calls, the records, the data records, what sites you're going to. Because remember, Verizon's an ISP, AT and T's an ISP. They can just seriously, just send everything that you're tracking because you're not anonymous to your ISP. Right. And and now we know that you're not anonymous to your your cell phone provider. You're not anonymous to your carrier. Um, so if, if you're planning on revolting, if you're planning on doing a nice sit-in or, you know, you're going to go protest somewhere, leave the phones at home. Um, you know, take take a phone or take a camera with a, uh, a Wi-Fi SD card and upload to Twitter that way. But this, 
this is a tracking device. This should be deter- This should be treated as an unclean device now. Now let's ask. This is the hard hitting question. So let's say you're using an MVNO. What about the M- <clears throat> the MVNOs like Ting or um, or was it Straight Talk or Arrowfly? I'm just naming the ones I can remember. Mm-hmm. Or Virgin. Oh. Do they have that same? Uh, because they're just buying it from the carriers, does it go back through the carriers, or is it their own thing? I wish I had an, an honest, perfect answer for you. The fact is, we don't know. If, if we had to think about this logically, though, these are companies that are renting network and renting um, airspace. They're, went, they're renting the airwaves from these big cell phone carriers. If the big cell phone carriers are compromised, you can pretty much be assured that the MVNOs are compromised as well. So if you've got Cricket, if you've got Virgin, if you've got Cincinnati Bell, if you've got you know any of these carriers that piggyback off a bigger one, yeah, it's, it's come down to the fact that unless you're in your backyard standing up your own towers, uh, some company somewhere is giving your data to the NSA. And then what about... Burner phones, because that was always the way the the true the true uh, anonymous people went. They they always got the burner phones, make a call, yeah. switch the SIM card, go from there. But I think now it doesn't matter with that either. No, no, and actually that's one of the things they're actually targeting with this location data. If they see a phone call of very short duration, and then that phone drops off the network because you just snapped it in half, um, or you turned off the phone, and then they see another phone turn on within that same location very rapidly, very right next to each other, um, they will red flag you. You are now on their radar and you are a person of interest. And, you know, I don't have to mention that when we discussed this last time, we discussed that the NSA was feeding this data back to law enforcement, feeding it back to the FBI, feeding it back to the DEA, where law enforcement officers are now taking the data and saying, oh, no, no, we didn't get that from the NSA. No, no, we... We were tailing that guy. Yeah, we, we totally saw him smoking that weed. Totally just happened upon it randomly. D- this? No. It's not a laptop with GPS coordinates. No, we'll just put that in the trunk. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Um, th- this is really something to worry about when it comes to our justice system. This undermines the entire paper trail of, of the way justice in America should work. The, the way law enforcement has been perceived to work over the years is now being undermined by these efforts. Well, the, the, the thing that, that b- not bothers me, but the thing I come to expect at this point is that if I'm, if I'm paying somebody to do this, I don't necessarily have the expectation of privacy, but I trust that, like you said in the beginning, there is some sort of real channel to, to get the information if needed. I don't want it so simple that somebody can just say, oh, what is Heim doing today? Let's just go, let's just double click and see. I want it to be a little harder because I understand you're, you're paying a service, you're bound by the federal laws, and unless you do it yourself, and the problem is I don't even think you can do it yourself. If you set up your own towers, I'm sure the FCC is going to make you comply with, with uh, the snooping laws. Right. So it, that that's a, that's a scary thing. Also, you can't even do it yourself. Yeah, it's it's really it's taken uh, our greatest communication device that humanity's come up with so far, right? The cell phone, the smartphone. It can do everything, and you carry it, and it's with you everywhere. Um, and it's turned it into this uh, this horrible thing. When you really think about it, your government can track you. They know what you're doing. They know who you're talking to. They know who you're texting. They know who's texting you. And they know all of this over big periods of time. So then they can go, okay, well, you must work here, and you must live here, and this is your favorite bar, and if we wanted to get you back in an alley, this is the time and place where we'd do it. If you've never done this, find a long-lost contact on Facebook and read the conversation between you. And... First read it, then look at the dates. You'll, it's scary to see the conversation on the internet that has no timestamp. But, but then you look at the time and say, I said this like, between a period of five or ten years that we had this conversation. And it's scary to know what they get just from that. Yeah. It's, and I wish there were a good way to combat this. The, honestly... There's no real technological way to fight this 
unless you pull out your GPS chips, unless you shut off your phone. And even then, there are, you know, uh, em- semi-confirmed to unconfirmed reports that even if your phone isn't off, the NSA can track you with it. Not sure if that's accurate, but we'll see in time. Well, the the other idea, the reason I don't turn off Wi-Fi and turn off um, what's it called GPS is because the ability for me to find my own phone if I get lost. Mm-hmm. I mean, we 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 don't need to talk about device manager, but device manager that Google provides, at least on the Android side, will pinpoint your phone to pretty good accuracy, and that's a service for me. But think about it, if they're using it, anybody else can use it because all they need is the, uh, the device ID and they can just search where it is. They just ping the tower. So it's the, the convenience that we get is getting back to everyone else. So turning off your Wi-Fi, basically keep your phone on airplane mode and then all, basically don't have a smartphone. You just have it. Then they'll be able to track your at least pings on the tower, but at least that stops it to, I don't know how far a tower goes, a mile, two miles. You make your phone call, then you got to turn it back off again. Well, if, if your phone's not utilizing, you know, some form of E911 that they can just tap into whenever they want. Oh, that's true, too. And you can't it's, win. It's a really, really hard problem, and cell phones are at the core of it. If you have a cell phone, you're a target. Wi-Fi calling, maybe? Yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. So now we have to find a Wi-Fi hotspot that's not Now you have, you have to find a hotspot, and not only that, you have to make sure you're using VoIP encryption on both ends, and you exchange private keys in between that, and it's, it's a really hard problem to solve. Well, I was going to mention Skype, but Skype apparently lost its end-to-end encryption yeah, at Skype, some point without telling us. The Skype is 100% um, compromised by the NSA. They have sold out to the governments long before they were bought by Microsoft, strangely enough. Well, so so on this note on how to block, uh, block signals, we just got an article from somebody. UK, bar, UK, United Kingdom, bars trash cans from tracking people with Wi-Fi. So if you read the story, and I only read it quickly while we're talking, is that advertisers were trying to use the device IDs to try and pinpoint how many iPhones or anything else by stealing the wife or pinging the, the device. And apparently the UK says no. But if advertisers are doing this, um, uh, what stops anybody else from doing this? So you really have to turn off Wi-Fi. Yeah, that's uh, that's a whole nother uh, a whole nother level. So worrying about the NSA is one thing. Worrying about advertisers is something completely different. I I'm sure there are data protection laws in place that say, hey, really guys, that's over the top, and it's solved with legislation, right? And if you find a company that's doing that, see the pants off of them. But unfortunately. When you do that, the penalties aren't nearly severe enough to make a company actually stop. And legislation takes forever to work through the, the you know, system of government that you're currently residing under. It's just scary to think that, that the cell phone in your pocket that you rely on day in and day out now is completely open to basically whoever wants it. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's harder for the average person, but it's all there. Right. And, right, and I, I can't wait for you know the inevitable day, which will happen one day because nothing's perfect, um, where a group of hackers, where anonymous or um, where uh, lulzsec breaks into the NSA's database or breaks into their VPN and just blows all this information wide open, and says, "Hey guys, look, we got screenshots of everything. Here's all the data. Here, you can have access to all of it." It'll be it'll be terrifying and it'll be hilarious because. I mean, you don't, you can't secure something like this. This is too big, it's too visible, and it's going to get broken. And there's, like you said, too many people, and somebody, whether you like Snowden or not, he decided to step up and say, this is what's going on. Yeah. And there's, there, there'll probably be more of him. If it's not him, it will come out at some other point. It will, it will, and there's a lot of people that have been that have become really politically charged by Snowden. You know, depending on your viewpoint, for better or for worse, I'll give you a hint: it's for the better. Um, but there's a lot of people who've become politically charged by this man, and they will follow in his footsteps. And we will learn more, and potentially we'll learn more in a not so responsibly disclosed way. So there's lots and lots of documents that Greenwald has looked at and says, hey. This is going to compromise some agents in the field. 
we won't publish that one. Oh, look at this one. We'll black out some names here or there, and we can publish this because it's information, but it doesn't hurt anyone directly. Um, we might not get that. We might get the you know the guy who rushes out and says, "Oh my God, here's all the names of our people in Afghanistan who are really spies." Ah, oh, really? That doesn't help anyone. That only hurts us. Um, or what about the people for money? They get this database and they will uh, private, quote unquote, private investigate whoever yeah. you want, and they do it covert. They do it without anyone knowing. That's the scarier part. But right. Again, all of, all of this. It basically it basically says we. C I think we all knew that somebody was watching everything. But now, and I keep on saying this, coming out, it's really scary by how far it goes and the cover-up. I mean, John Stewart on Monday, it was either Monday or last Thursday, uh, said, the funny part is every time the NSA says no, Edward Snowden the following week says, here's the evidence that you were lying. Right. And that and went I mainstream. By the way, it's on John Stewart. It's mainstream. And and when when mainstream media gets a hold of it, people are starting to starting to listen. Yeah, and um, it, it's going to, this whole thing is going to get bigger and bigger, and there needs to be something. It has to stop somewhere. We just saw um, this week, and of all the companies, of all the people you would expect to be fighting on the side of justice, righteousness, privacy, Microsoft? Really? On their TechNet blog, they posted a big, long article where they essentially it boiled down to this, and I quote, they perceived the, the U.S. government as an advanced persistent threat, which means they consider the U.S. government to be top-tier hackers, top-tier threats to people that use computers, people that use their services, people that buy things from Microsoft are now threatened by the US government and Microsoft is starting to take all of their connections through data centers, through servers, to people and use perfect forward secrecy to stop the NSA spying. Microsoft is fighting the US government. Well, I think they had to take a hard-hitting stance because they were outed at, with uh, with Skype being there, the Connect always being on, and and the privacy implications there. I think they had to take a really hard stance and use really harsh language to show that they're taking this seriously. Right, right, and it's it's definitely threatening their international business. They've had a lot of countries come up and say, "Hey, look, we're throwing all this stuff out. We're going with Linux," or you know, we're buying Apple computers, or we're doing something open source that we can actually look at and verify there's no backdoors in this product. And, you know, they started throwing stuff out, and Microsoft said, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, stop the presses. We've got to start fighting now. And, you know, it's, it's not the most honest of intentions, but it gets the job done, right? It gets the ball moving in the right direction, and I'm happy with them. John Lee in uh, the private chat room is saying that China, along with the Syrian Electronic Army, was the last group to get that designation that you just mentioned. That's impressive. That's very impressive. So I'm hoping John Lee is correct on that, but I'm just <laughs> pointing out in our chat room that we don't really have. That's what they're saying. With the 10 minutes left, you want to move on to our next story? Yes, and uh, so we've covered a bunch of a bunch of heavy hitting stuff, a bunch of really yeah stuff that just weighs on you. So let's let's make this this bit of NSA news really light. The NSA, your tax dollars are going to pay for World of Warcraft subscriptions and Second Life apparel. Oh, that sounds like a Fark headline <laughs> if I ever heard one. It should be. Um, so. The NSA apparently has been trying to find terrorists inside the world of Warcraft. Second Life, EVE Online, name your online game. They've been playing it, seeking out those terrorists. Don't worry, Goldshire is safe from bombs. So the elf that's uh, mining, that's like farming coins could be an NSA spy? He could be. He could be. He could be one of those guys trying to sell you gold and wow. So apparently, and, and they've said that they found, I'm not sure if I can believe this, but this came out at the Guard, uh, it, the Guardian published this two days ago. The NSA said, no, 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 we found links, really, we found links to World of Warcraft, so we're going to pump a bunch of money into finding the ties between terrorist organizations, players, characters, and guilds 
trying to spread Islamic extremism and violence against the United States. Really? Really? And apparently they're having trouble justifying this because higher-ups in the company are saying, or higher-ups in the, the department are saying, wait, you guys want to what? We're just paying you to play video games all day. Really? This is what you come up with? And they're having issues coming up with, you know, oh, no, no, really, we found these terrorists because they haven't caught one due to this information. I mean, now, really, what is this? Now, didn't uh, now didn't Osama bin Laden not have internet? When we caught him, we had to do we had to go old school and do just like straight up surveillance. There was no internet, I don't think. Um, I know they had they, it was reported, and I'm not sure how accurate this is. It was reported that there were flash drives found with him or with, in that complex, but uh, computers, so internet. Net. Yeah, not not entirely sure. Sneaker net's definitely big, and honestly. You're not going to get sneaker net while uh, while breaking into Xbox Live. And by the way, it's listed there. It's named in the Guardian article. They've been playing games on Xbox Live trying to find terrorists. How many terrorists do you know play Call of Duty? And no, I'm not talking about that 12-year-old that curses at you and says bad things about your mom. I'm talking about real, legit terrorists. I mean, come on, guys. Really? This is what we're doing? I mean, when I heard this, it didn't bother me. I don't know. It, 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 to me, it was like, Really? They're going after WoW characters. And like I said, John Stewart, and we'll post this in the show notes, did a really funny story about exactly what you just said. In WoW, they were spying, and with the quote that everyone on the internet must be exactly who they say they are. Oh. So next time you get gold from uh, the whatever, the elf. I don't play World of Warcraft, so I don't know. There, so, so the NSA, luckily for, uh, for all of us WoW players we can be assured that the NSA has got Tier 5 raid gear, and they are ready to defend us across the servers. So what, what level, what level do you seen, think? A world, oh, they, are they level they're 80s? Level. Oh, yeah, they're max level. Now, did they're, they buy their levels? Did they, uh, did they, are they selling them to the highest oh, bidder? Oh, no, no. These are hardworking American men. These are hardworking, employed Americans. These guys went from 1 to 80, and I, I think you can do that in WoW in like a week now because with all the expansions, it just it sucks anymore. But, I bet you it's overtime, too. They got the, they I'm got sure. The, yeah, we could overtime it. Take their work home with them, man. I mean, it's a hard life working at the NSA. Warcraft, 40 hours a week, man, at least. Now, now, do you have to use Blizzard's two-factor off to get in? Oh, I'm sure. I mean, this is the NSA we're talking about. It's top-notch security. Okay. <laughs> well, I can see them as being asked for their, their two-factor <laughs> off key. So they have to use their RSA key to get in, and then they have yep. to use their, their, uh, their, their uh, what's it called, their Blizzard key to make sure their account doesn't get hacked. Oh, man. You, you should have seen the, the five-man Nyx raid that the NSA did. It was really cool. <laughs> Their, their healer could use some work, but, you know, their tanks were awesome. Really good. Uh, this... Look, I, that was I a good laugh. It. It's sad. It, look, we're not laughing. We're laughing because it's funny. But it is really sad that, that even you can't, you can't play a multiplayer game without, without, so, getting, so without worrying think, about it. What do they think of Counter-Strike? When I play on the terrorist team and, and I'm planting the bomb in a nuclear substation, what do they think there? Wait a minute, that guy's planting a bomb. There's some nuclear stuff. Oh my god, we should catch him. I mean, really? And, and by the way, we can't let these guys take the full brunt uh, of the hit, right? It's actually uh, one of the things that pushed the NSA to do this. It, there were some special requests by the GCHQ, basically Britain's NSA, um, to uh, continue on this work and to dig deeper. Just look up the Guardian article. It's hilarious. It's written by uh, James Ball, and it came out on December 9th of this year. It's so uh, going it to be out. linked in the show notes, so it will be there for all to see. But it's, again, it's you can't even play video games without worrying about who's watching you. And I'm going to start, uh, start slinging some propaganda in my games. Last story, last story. We got six minutes left, and this is sad because this affects me. And it goes: Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, where I live and have as healthcare, are notifying 840,000 members after laptops stolen with personal data. So, so what happened? Some thieves, literally thieves, like black masks, walked in and stole two laptops. 
that were secured but not encrypted with what's it called member with member information names addresses date of birth social security and limited clinical information so hey, don't worry. You'll be getting some, uh, you know, free ID protection, something or other that they'll shoehorn in there. So I think I think I'm getting. I'm not sure if I'm one of them. I'm almost positive that I probably am because 840,000 members sounds like a decent number for the state of New Jersey. Uh, basically, you get a free year of some sort of monitoring service. So now that everyone knows that, all you have to do is wait 366 days. Because your name, your address, your date of birth, and your social security number still hasn't changed. So, so my question for these companies, and honestly, it's it's really trivial, and we'll go into this in a future episode. We'll talk about encryption and how to keep your data safe from specifically this kind of thing. Because you know, if you lose a laptop, you kind of want it to be an inconvenience. It shouldn't ever be a tragedy. So keep backups, keep it encrypted. I'm sure there were backups. I don't doubt that there were backups. Right, right. I'm just doubting that. I'm just saying, okay, it got out. Why isn't it encrypted? And I think that's. I think they're just. It's a large company, and the slow-moving tide is not. It, that's that was probably on their agenda for next month. Oh, I'm sure it always is, though. Security because, is always next month, and it keeps being next month until this happens. I mean, I'm sure, oh, we'll just wait till the the ACA goes in, and then once the ACA goes in, we're going to take security seriously. Look, I don't yeah. know. Yeah, you see, I'm going to create a company. I'm going to take an entrepreneurial venture. I will hire people to break into your car at your company and steal your laptop, and you being you know the security professional at your job saying guys really we have to take security seriously I will stage a break in where you lose data so your CTO takes security seriously and gives you that budget and by the way they actually that actually would penetration testers do they actually yes. pay people to do this and and it's not a drill I mean theoretically it is but when you lose that laptop and have to report it you you're the, you have to go and your job could be on the line yeah. So look, security. My sister just started complaining that her company is forcing them to put a pin lock on their phone, not the swipe thing, but an actual four-digit pin or the passcode. And I go, great, you should have had it on before. She goes, but this is so inconvenient. And I said, then take their company-issued BlackBerry, and then you don't have to worry about it. If it's their data, they they get to set the authority to do whatever they want, and you have to follow along. And you should, to be honest. Yeah. So I I don't like it's better than nothing. I don't like the Android swipe. I used it for a little bit, but I just went went straight back to my to my numbers. I like my numbers. Yeah, four digits. Okay. If you keep it at eight, nice. If you're using a full password with numbers and letters and all that jazz, dude, awesome. I can't hit all those when I pick up my phone every day. I mean, that's that's kind of... You got to YubiKey it. You got to YubiKey it. I do. It, which I don't I actually know if it works, but that would I, be... Uh, that would be a good use case. A two-factor to get into your phone. Oh, God. To use I, your other two-factor. But no, no, you're right. Look, I use a swipe because it's 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 not even that complicated, I'm, and I'll admit that I'm bad at this. It's just, it's just, it prevents the deter, it prevents someone from picking it up. And that's right. really all I want. Now with my Nexus 5, I'm thinking about going full-on encryption and putting the passcode on. But then I have to go back to every time I hit the power button, I have to put the code in. Right, right. And I've been encrypting my phone harder. since I supported it. And honestly, I wouldn't look back. But there's really been no reason to encrypt it. Who's going to steal my phone and yank the data? But why not? Doesn't I hurt look, me any. I look at it that I always have two devices on me that can get to the the new Android device manager. So if somebody steals it, I can quickly get to the other device and wipe it within I don't know probably a few minutes. Yeah. So I, I have to make this decision on what I want to do. I'm leaning towards encryption, but again, security is inconvenient. So you got to weigh what how how dear you hold your information or other people's information for that hand that matter. Right. So. And again, if you're planning on, you know, revolting or bombing something, don't carry a cell phone and don't talk about it to your friends on WoW. 
Or on the cell. Yeah, we said that. Not even on the cell phone. I, right. I think our safest way to communicate right now is still the, the U.S. Postal Service. It's weird, yeah. You know, maybe this whole NSA thing is just a way to get people to send letters again. I bet you it's a ploy to get us to fund the post office. Look, and, and, and we just haven't heard of Snowden leak that they're scanning our mail. I, I haven't seen anything that like that. I'm assuming they are, but we haven't heard anything yet. So, right. anyway, we got to go. So, until next time, we'll, we'll be seeing you. See you, guys. Bye. And...